What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Let's speak optimizing Doom of the Dark Ages for the best performance so you can hopefully enjoy it a little bit more. This video is not going to touch on Windows optimization at all. Instead, you'll find useful guides linked down below for Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimizations, as well as anything else useful. We're only going to focus on in-game settings in this video. That being said, in-game optimization has been a bit of a mixed bag for people, at least near and on release. Currently, it seems that ray tracing is forced on pretty much no matter what settings you choose, and you will definitely need a relatively beefy system in order to run this thing anyways. The minimum requirements, which you're seeing on screen now, are pretty accurate, recommending at least an NVIDIA 2060 or AMD RX 6600. But of course, you'll likely need something a bit better to get more of a playable experience out of it, especially if you're not going to be playing at 1080p, such as I'm playing at 2K with a 3080 Ti on medium settings, and I'm getting a solid 60 FPS in most places. That being said, 4K, you're going to need a very beefy system to run it. So without further ado, let's speak about getting even more performance out of our system. First of all, pause the game, head across to settings, and we'll start over on the video tab at the very top, which is this one up here. The display settings, pretty simple. Play full screen for the best input latency and performance, aspect ratio, whatever your monitor is. Same goes for your resolution. It should match your display and the refresh rate as well. If you have a 120Hz screen, set the refresh rate to 120Hz, 160, 160, etc. Etc. VSync should definitely be turned off unless you're getting screen tearing. And then present from compute is a relatively niche option that I haven't seen pop up much, if at all. And basically, this just means that it's taking what you're seeing on your screen from a different part of the graphics pipeline, which could cause issues mainly with external screen overlay software. So Discord, Steam, possibly recording software like OBS or even FPS counters. For me, though, I haven't had any issues, so I haven't needed to worry about this at all. Having it on should result in better performance, so if you can and you're not having issues, leave it on. Then resolution scaling mode. By default, it seems to be set to dynamic. I'd recommend having it set to off just so that you're always rendering at your native resolution and instead you're using upscaling to get a better performance. This way you have a more consistent visual experience and obviously performance wise too. Finally, performance metrics. There are a ton of different options here. Basically, the more hardcore you set your options here, the more information you'll see when you apply changes on the side of your screen. Ultra Nightmare provides a nightmare level of detail. Ultra gets rid of that green section. Medium gets rid of the graphs for the most part. And low is really all you'll need in most cases, just a simple FPS counter. Medium, however, does give a lot more info, telling you things about ray tracing, HDR, what upscaler you're using, etc. Now we'll scroll down to the video section here, where the majority of your FPS will be gained, mostly through upscaling. Field of view, play with whatever you want. You can go from 90 to 120. Personally, I'm comfortable at 100. When I'm playing ultra wide, I'll push this up a bit further. Chromatic aberration and depth of field, entirely your preference. Personally, I'll leave both of these on for extra effect. Sharpening your preference again. Film grain, you can leave on one if you like the experience or haven't noticed that at all, but you can turn it off here. That being said, more film grain, especially if you're recording or streaming, will make your encoder work a little bit harder, taking up more megabits per second, essentially, as there's just more things happening visually. Having a bit of film grain usually results in a slightly better looking image just by things being a bit more dynamic. Then Upscaler by default, surprisingly, it seems to have chosen TAA, even though I have an RTX 3080 Ti. Maybe only with a 40 series with frame generation it would have chosen a DLSS for me, but anyways, when you get to the Upscaler section, don't use TAA. It's just a blurry mess. Use DLSS or FSR, depending on what graphics card you have. If you're rocking an NVIDIA 40 series or above, definitely choose DLSS. This DLSS is DLSS 4, and there's supposed to be multi-frame gen support. I unfortunately can't test that out. That being said, I've seen that a lot of people have said that frame generation is working really well, input latency is super low, and that's fantastic to hear. Unfortunately, if you don't have an RTX 40 series or above GPU, in order to use frame generation, you'll need to choose FSR. But if you do that, you can use frame generation on any hardware. Seeming though, I just changed from TAA to DLSS on quality. I'll leave my sharpness as is if not raise it a bit higher, you should see that my performance is mostly the same, but the game should look so much better. Re-enabling my FPS overlay, it seems that we've gained a solid maybe 10 FPS. I was around 60, but there was another demon walking around over here, so besides a bit of variability, the game should look quite a bit 
better using a DLSS or FSR, especially when compared to TAA. Moving further down here, super resolution, I'd usually recommend quality for pretty much anything that you choose, be it FSR, DLSS, or XCSS. But that being said, if you're getting a really high FPS count, especially if it's above what FPS your screen can actually display, consider choosing DLAA for a much better looking experience. Basically, you're just rendering the game at the native resolution, and instead of upscaling from 720p to 1080p, the NVIDIA DLSS or AMD FSR upscaler is working to make your image look even better from native resolution, making the game look super, super clean. As you can see, enabling it, I'm still at around 60 FPS, and this is where I'd probably pay for the most part, unless I get really bad FPS drops later on, especially during certain bits of combat, etc. As I did experience a bit of frame dropping, even in the early early emissions, I'll be leaving this as quality just for better performance. Finally, NVIDIA Reflex Mode, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, I definitely recommend turning this on. If you have a really slow CPU, choose Boost here instead. Finally, Display Calibration, you can skip over this, HDR shouldn't have too much of a performance impact, it's more about how the game looks for you. Motion Blur, mostly just to do with motion sickness, if you struggle with it, turning this off or down can help with that. And finally, Advanced here, we can actually customize the meat of our options here. For the most part, these presets are pretty well tuned based on different bits of hardware. Unfortunately, this game, even on the lowest settings, doesn't support things like the Steam Deck, so portable hardware is going to struggle quite a bit with this. For example, at 2K with a 3080 Ti, I'm getting a solid 75-ish FPS on the lowest possible settings. Moving up to medium, where I was playing before, about 70 FPS, high 68, 67, ultra 67, 66, nightmare 65, 64, and finally ultra nightmare. I'm still getting around 66, so I'd assume a full restart would be necessary for whatever the changes were made here, if there's not too much of a difference between this and the lower option. Now, path tracing is something that's supposed to be coming, probably in the very near future in a patch, and I would assume that would be enabled by the ultra nightmare setting here, resulting in a huge amount of FPS loss pretty much on any hardware. For the most part, medium works fine and it looks great, so that's where I'll be working up and down from. For the most part, there's only a few options you really need to worry about here, and that's mainly to do with texture quality. Texture quality, you can usually crank it up, have a much better looking game, and performance-wise, you shouldn't see any difference. For the most part, look in the bottom right-hand corner where you'll see VRAM. Currently, it's using, well, 6 gigs out of 10 on my system. If I crank this up, you'll see that number increases to about 8.5 out of 10, which is fine. As long as you have about, let's say, 5 to 10% of your VRAM left over, cranking this texture pool all the way up means that you're going to have a much better looking game with higher quality textures at no performance cost. The same goes for all the way down here. Texture filtering quality, raising this as well, makes the textures look even better and for the most part, having it cranked all the way up shouldn't have any performance impact. So medium versus this optimized medium setting, things should look a lot better, close up and a bit further away, and we're getting a solid 69-ish FPS. Undoing those two options, we're still sitting exactly where we were, just textures will look a little bit smoother. For the rest of these options, I'll just very quickly run through them with optimized settings for the most part. Shadow quality, medium or high is fine here. Reflection quality, as this game has forced ray tracing on. This is going to be one of the heavier options, at least in certain areas of certain scenes. Medium's probably as high as I would go here on most systems if you're looking for performance. Lights quality, probably the same. Medium, if not, maybe high. The performance difference here isn't too bad. Particle quality, medium, if not higher. I haven't noticed too much of a difference here, both visuals-wise and performance-wise. For the most part, raising this up doesn't result in too much FPS lost. Although, of course, particles are very intermittent and appear and disappear in combat, things like that. If you're experiencing frame drops in combat, definitely come back and lower this option later. Decal quality, which is the smaller visual effects, for the most part, high or ultra here is fine, as these occur relatively rarely in scenes. Water quality, high or medium here is fine. The same goes for volumetrics, I'll go with high here. Geometric quality, high as well. And finally, shading quality, high as well. Cranking these options up is pretty much a free option change. I'm still at around 68, 67 FPS, but things should be looking a little bit better. I would assume in more populated scenes with more going on, higher quality geometry could cause 
allows you to start it quite a bit, especially if you have a much lower amount of VRAM in your system. For me though, at 10 gigs using a solid 8.8 .8 out of it, having higher geometric quality doesn't seem to have too much of an impact as I can have a bit more higher quality models loaded in as I do have a bit of VRAM left over. Then directional occlusion, I haven't seen too much of a difference here between low and ultra, both visuals wise and performance wise, not much changes here at all. I'll just be leaving this at the default of medium in this preset, but if you're playing on high, leave it on high, etc. Finally, accessibility, none of these should really have too much of an impact performance wise, and we've run through pretty much everything here. These are my optimized settings. While a lot of these are higher than you may be able to play with on your system, if something here is high, drop it to medium, medium to low, etc. Basically just one step down from here, and things should perform pretty well. If you're really struggling for performance and you're one of those who are suffering quite a bit, make sure your graphics card driver is up to date, super, super important, and Windows as well. And if you're stuck on the lowest graphics option, consider raising the texture pool size and the texture filtering quality if VRAM allows, as you can make your game look so, so much better with very little to no performance impact cost at all, even on super low end hardware. That being said, updating your GPU is super important, especially for brand new AAA title releases. This is no difference. Make sure you update your driver and hop back into the action as soon as possible. But yeah, that's really that. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching and and hopefully you enjoy Doom the Dark Ages. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.